everyone, it's Chrissy here again, your life skills and deployment educator. I'm here for a second portion of briefs. This is for homecoming and reintegration for uh, military kids. So if you have a child, you are taking care of a child, or you are related to a military child, this brief might be useful for you. Now, one of the ways that I like to start off this brief is by saying, I look around the room and I say, now this isn't World War II, this isn't during a draft. Um, every service member in this room chose to be an active duty service member. They had goals, they had something they wanted to accomplish. They chose to leave their life, their lifestyle and become active duty service members. And then I look around the room and I also say all of the adults who married into this lifestyle, I'm included, I'm a military spouse as well, chose to be a part of this lifestyle. And the people in the room, this is what I teach to military families, people in the room who did not choose this lifestyle are the children of active duty service members. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I myself chose to have multiple children become military kids. I actually think my children learn life skills earlier in life um, as military kids rather than um, maybe having their first big move the first time they turn 18 and leave home. And I think these are good things to teach our kids. But with that said, they need an additional safety net and additional resources and ways that we can help them through the process. Children experience a lot, even if, even if they might not show it, they have a lot of emotions that go into um, a deployment and a reintegration. And it's not always in the processes that you would think. You would think child has a parent member leave, child is sad. Child has a parent come home from deployment, child is happy. Our emotions are a little bit more complicated than that. And uh, you might recognize that yourself as an adult who is um, a loved one of a service member. Um, so realize that children do not have the same output um, inputs and outputs that you might expect. And realize that they might have behavior that shows up later um, and not maybe associated with the event itself. So. It's a good idea before the service member comes home to start talking with your child about the reintegration process and what it looks like. And that doesn't mean that you need to sit down and provide them with a brief or show me, show them my brief. It just means there are a few little things that you can do um, to help your child start thinking about reintegration, let them share their concerns, let them talk about some of the ways they wanna celebrate homecoming, and then let them feel like they're a, pro a part of the process. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to cover first identifying some concerns that we might have for the service member coming home about reintegrating with the family and also for the children about welcoming in someone who has been absent for a period of time. We wanna also celebrate some of the changes that we have experienced and we wanna talk about some general reintegration tips. Again, since we have created these briefs to bring services to our clients during the global pandemic, I encourage you to reach out to us at Fleet & Family to get some additional handouts and some other resources that we can provide for you. It's useful to watch these videos, but when you can get something, some additional um, ways to remind yourself of the learning or maybe some activities for your child, um, this is a fantastic thing to do. So please reach out to us for further resources. So one of the first things I wanna say is allow your child to develop their own homecoming story. Now this could be sitting down with your child if they are artistic and maybe drawing what homecoming would look like. Um, maybe for children who have experienced deployment before, maybe you have a time where you sit down and you talk about what homecoming looked like for each child. Or maybe you remind a child who doesn't remember uh, the previous deployment. Look at some pictures and say, this is what this is going to look like. Maybe there's a video you can find um, that shows what children are experiencing or what a homecoming will look like or what a um, reintegration will look like. Um, so if your child is artistic and wants to do that, think of some ways that you can start celebrating that. Um, if you haven't in the 
already been doing this, maybe providing something in your home, nothing we want to be putting out on the internet, but something in your home that kind of marks down the days until um, the reunion will happen. Get creative, let your child have a say in this. Um, and think about also looking at reintegration from your child's eyes. So Military One Source actually has a really fantastic book on homecoming where they take several children and provide their perspectives of what homecoming looks like for them. And one of them will be, you know, very typical where they just, oh, I'm so excited. I've missed my parent, my dad or my mom so much. Um, I ran and give them a hug and I just can't, I have the best feeling in the world. And then they also panned, they have several stories, but one of the other ones talks about a young child who is kind of picking up on the nervous energy in the house. Uh, parents running around, um, additional visitors in the house, um, and it feels like that child's routine is upset by the change in a homecoming or in a reintegration. Another child talks about how dad, the service member, is very big and tall and has this booming voice and the child is used to being with mom all the time who's smaller and petite and uses a quieter voice. So a child's pers perspective of a homecoming and a reintegration can be really different depending on what they're feeling at the moment. Um, so think about looking through your child's eyes. Um, let your child also express being the hero in their situation. I stayed strong during this time and really encourage them too. Um, it said that you have to have five really positive interactions to every one negative interaction for you to still, still feel like you are in a... Um, positive relationship with someone. So it can be highly normal to when children are particularly agitated or upset for adults to be criticizing them or to be um, reprimanding them more than normal. So consider that too. Even if your child's behavior is quite difficult at the time, I'm a parent, I'm a former public school teacher, so I've been there, I've seen it. Um, I have to remind myself to give positive and regular encouragement to children and to my students um, so that they feel like the relationship is still in a positive space, okay? Let the child convey their own message. Um, and then this is something, you, if, if you wanna do the book, this is something that you can do together, together as an activity. If not, ask your child about what are some of the ways that they might wanna welcome home uh, the service member in the period of their absence. If they're really young, kids do what kids do, um, but also you might want to communicate with your service member ahead of time what your child's schedule looks like, um, what some of their fears are ahead of time, um, what are some of the things that they really like to do, and then also let them know how the global pandemic has affected them. How Are they um, generally unaffected because they're mostly at home with a caregiver or a parent most of the time, or have they been completely unable to see their friends and um, their classmates for a long period of time. How has homeschooling been going? Has it been difficult? Has it been a little positive? Has your child picked up some new hobbies? Um, have they been feeling sad, more sad than normal? Let them know, the service members, so they have a little bit of an idea of how they can um, jump back in. All right, I'll be back for part two of reintegration with children.